Hello, BookTube, and greetings from a dark and rainy Boston. No sunlight, no hint of it. Just dark and dismal twilight. Forever. <laughs> it, it alternate, the weather outside alternates between actual rain and what is arguably even worse, a kind of Northern Ireland quasi-rain where there's, you get wet, but it's not actually falling. It's just... It's a gripey, grimy kind of weather, uh, perfect for holding up indoors and reading. And that is what this video is about. This is another one of those weird, amorphous uh, video, current reading, am reading, Tuesday read type videos. This is another one of those where I want to show you uh, some books that I am rereading and some books that I will be reading in the course of the next few days, in the course of this week. Uh, to see if they interest you the way they interest me. <laughs> that's, all there is. that's all there is to it. The first one is a big fat biography. I think we saw the advanced copy on this channel. Uh, I read the advanced copy and loved it. And uh, as is true as my way with most big fat biographies, I'm going to reread it uh, to nail down my impressions, take lots of notes, that sort of thing. This is Jane Levy. This is uh, the big fella. This is her big biography of Babe Ruth. Uh, for those of you who not who are not in America, the legendary baseball player Babe Ruth. Uh, <laughs> you want if you want a, a taste of what he was like, that's him <laughs> right there <laughs> in the midst of an absolutely adoring crowd. Uh, this is is absolutely terrific, and it had big shoes to fill because uh, 20 years ago, something like that, Lee Monfield, another great writer, did a biography called The Big Bam, also about Babe Ruth, and it was terrific. Just uh, I, when I read it, I loved it so much that I actually thought maybe it was definitive. But it, this book just proves to me that there's plenty of room for more than one definitive biography. So it isn't a zero-sum game. This was terrific in ways that The Big Bam was not. This was terrific covering all sorts of areas of Beirut's life in greater detail than, than The Big Bam did. Including uh, the business of Beirut. The business of being Babe Ruth, I thought, was done really well in this book. Uh, you'd think that would take the charm and the charisma off it, but it did not. So this was... I, I can't wait to reread it. This is just terrific. Next one I'm, is also a reread. I also heartily recommend it, but boy, oh boy, the big fellow... Excuse me. The big fellow will leave a huge smile on your face when you're done. Whereas this one will make you want to emigrate to the planet Pluto. <laughs> this is Like War uh, by P.W. Singer and Emerson Brookling. This is uh, their study of the weaponization of social media, all the different ways that that happens, whether you're involved in social media or not, whether you're following a certain platform or not, what these things have done to the modern world, and also extrapolating forward. Just an incredible book. Something fascinating on every page. These, these authors really have mastered the knack, which is no easy thing to do, believe you me. I kind of sort of, in a much smaller way, mastered it myself, and it's not easy to do. They have mastered the knack of amassing a huge amount of information and then conveying it in a very accessible way, a very page-turning way. So, I mean, I was going to say, if you're, if you're involved in the subject, but you are, whether you like it or not, uh, this is kind of must-reading for 2018. Uh, I can't, I will read it again, definitely. And then this next one is also a reread. Uh, it was, it's a long and very complex work of history. Far more complex now that I think back on it than I, than it seemed while I was reading it. So I'm, I'm going to sink myself into it this week. This is by Derek Liebart and it is the grand improvisation. And it's, it's a big history all about really the passing of the torch, really as the British Empire, Britain and the British Empire waned, America waxed in the middle of the 20th century. Uh, it's, it's fantastically strong on the character portraits of all the big players involved. You see some of them there, uh, and there are others that aren't, that aren't here, people, names that you won't know, that are, you, that are indelibly portrayed in this book. It's sort of a, a companion to this thing here, uh, James Barr's Lords of the Desert. Another very ambitious, very good history of basically the same subject, only a little bit earlier. They really go together well. Uh, they both deal with the, the, the biggest and most important power transfer of the 20th century, which we often think just reflexively would have been military, militarily done during World War I or, War, or especially World War II, but really it's not. Really, the, the, it's the leadership of the Western world that, was, that changed in the middle of the 20th century. And both these books make a real nuanced, very interesting case about the extent to which that passing of the torch was intentional. 
<laughs> is the most euphemistic way to put it. The intent, the extent to which America's involvement in the prolonged military conflict that is really World War One and World War Two combined was not shark-like. <laughs> that maybe somewhere, somehow, in some closed room conversations, discussions were had about the power vacancies that could be occupied by the country that had the most money. <laughs> it's utterly fascinating. So I, I can't wait. I will. This will be one of those things. In fact, it might be today, because today is a perfect day. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm starting to convince all of you that today is a perfect day to curl up with a nice long work of nonfiction. <laughs> not a nice long novel, but a nice long work of nonfiction. Why not exercise your whole brain for peace sakes? Wouldn't kill you. <laughs> so, sorry. I'm channeling me sainted ma. <laughs> uh, but I also want to show you uh, some books that I haven't read yet that I'm going to be reading. Uh, starting with this one. This is just... It's so sad. Uh, but I'm going to be... It's, this is from Modern Library. It's a new Modern Library volume. It's four different essays on impeachment and American history. So it's got... It's got four figures in here. Uh, it's got uh, John Meacham on uh, Andrew Johnson. Uh, it's got Timothy Naftali on Richard Nixon, the most famous impeachment. Uh, it's got Pat Peter ba Baker on Bill Clinton. And then it has Jeffrey Engel on an essay called On the Constitution and Donald Trump. Now, I confess, I am going to be reading this for the John Meacham. Just for that essay. I, I, I love his work. I, what can I say? I, he, he's won me over. I really like the way he writes history. I will uh, Naftali's work I'm familiar with as well. I'll be reading the whole of this thing. The reason why it's a little sad is because there's only one reason why a book like this exists. There's only one reason why this has been compiled by Modern Library and where, why they're thinking that it has a chance of selling in... Uh, is this an October release? Yes, it is. Uh, and it's the fourth piece. <laughs> the fourth piece is the reason for this book. And that is sad because Donald Trump is not going to be impeached. <laughs> that that's not going to happen. So this is not going to become an actual quartet of historical figures. And and in this and there's a there's a book coming out much later called How to Get Rid of a President and a bunch of other things. There that is the the unspoken sort of shadowy person in the room of these books is we all know it's coming. Here's your chance to read about it. And it's not coming. <laughs> but that's all right. This is still going to be fascinating. And the and the Engels essay on Donald Trump and the Constitution will be fascinating anyway. Depressing, but fascinating. <laughs> uh, the next one is YA. Uh, this is a debut novel, and, and not only do I love to keep reading YA, I might I might carp about uh, what has been BookTube's rather unhealthy fixation with it, uh, but I love reading it, and I also love debut works. Absolutely, this is by Peter Stone, and it's the perfect candidate. Uh, and it's a political YA novel, which is ambitious right there. Uh, when recent high school graduate Cameron Carter lands an internship with Congressman Billy Beck in Washington, D.C., he thinks it is his ticket out of small-town captivity. Uh, what he lacks in connections and beltway polish, he makes up for in smarts, and he soon finds a friend and mentor in fellow staffer Ariel Lancaster. That is, until she winds up dead. <laughs> as rumors and accusations about her death fly around Capitol Hill, Cameron's low profile makes him the perfect candidate for an FBI investigation that he wants no part of. Uh, before he knows it, and with his family's future at stake, he discovers D.C.'s darkest secrets as he races to expose a deadly conspiracy if it doesn't get him killed first. That sounds just great. That sounds just terrific. As a political thriller for YA, for a YA audition, a readership, I can't wait to read it. Uh, I, the author, it's his debut work, so he could drop the ball. I might be equating him with Satan himself in a week, <laughs> but I doubt it. We'll see. Uh, then this next one, utterly fascinating premise. Can't wait to get to it and see, uh, and see if, if the author lives up to it. Let me show you this. It's Wasteland. The Great War and the Origins of Modern Horror. <laughs> this is by uh, Scott, uh, W. Scott Poole. Uh, and it's a, it's exact, it, it sounds like it's about exactly what the subtitle describes, which is not a connection I have ever made. Uh, the roots of modern horror are found in the First World War, so says the pub sheet. Uh, it was the most devastating event to occur in the early 1900s, with 38 million dead and 17 million wounded in the most grotesque of ways, owing to the new machines brought to war. If Downton Abbey showed the ripple effect of this catastrophe above stairs, can't think of a book that did that, no. <laughs> uh, Wasteland reveals how, how 
Bloody battlefields, screaming asylums, and desolated cities and villages made their way into the darker corners of our psyche. Historian W. Scott Poole chronicles the era's major figures, Freud, T.S. Eliot, H.P. Lovecraft, Wilfred Owen, uh, Peter Lorre, David Cronenberg, and Freddy Krueger. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. Uh, as well as their influences. Wasteland is a surprising but wholly convincing perspective on horror that also speaks to the audience for history, film, and popular culture. And even without reading this thing, I'm already thinking along those lines now, which is just fascinating. Because it's not just the, the horribly disfigured veterans and the, the, the carnage of the battlefield. It's also the, the flu epidemic that followed in the war's aftermath and that plenty of people at the time connected with the war uh, that, that killed more people than the war. And uh, homelessness. That, oh, I, I just I think it's a fascinating well, it's a perfect example of uh, when did I say when this comes out this is October uh, it's a perfect example of uh, of a fascinating nonfiction book where the premise alone is so fascinating you start thinking about it even before you've read what the author has to say on the subject so I, I'm looking forward to diving right in uh, the next one is not a book that I'm looking forward to diving right into but these are kind of my duty now I have kind of made my peace with it I, I fought against the Harness in 2016 and in 2017. I made all sorts of hopeful, foolish decisions to avoid the news, to cancel news, magazine subscriptions, all that sort of thing. But it, it's it's no use, and it's not worthy. If you if if you're up to your eyeballs in following the news and being accountable for the time in which you live, when those times are good. The flip side of that is that you are also responsible when those times are not good. So, in other words, I am reading Trump books. I'm not letting a major Trump book go by. And here's the next one, The Apprentice. Uh, this is by Greg Miller, who is a national security correspondent at the Washington Post, uh, winner of the Pulitzer Prize for that, I think. And this is Trump, Russia, and the Subversion of American Democracy. I don't imagine that this book will show me anything that I haven't read in, in half a dozen other books, but it's, it's the next major release, so I will be reading it. <laughs> and, can't imagine that I will be enjoying it, but we shall see. Uh, some of these books have surprised me, and it's, these are extremely smart people writing from an extremely vital animus to produce these books. No one writing these books is thinking, I'm just going to slap something together. They're, this is a passionate subject. So there is a lot of interesting reading involved here. It's just, you know, you, so you're interested while you're turning the pages, and then when you're finished, you realize, oh, wait, this is the real world, and you just get sick with this brick of of depression but i i will suffer so that you don't have to <laughs> so, so i will read this and i'll report back and then the last one i want to show you today and this is just and this is just vague amorphous tuesday reads video is something fascinating something i don't think i've ever read it's a work of history but i don't think i've ever read a book on this subject uh i think i've only read bits and pieces in larger books and in in uh biographies of the people involved and that the, the book is by christine haynes and it's our friends the enemies it's a new study from uh, Harvard University Press of uh, the occupation of France in the wake of the Napoleonic Wars. You had this nation take arms against the rest of the world. When its dictator was decapitated, when its government was decapitated, a huge amount of, of occupying troops were stationed. Well, let me, let me read it to you. Do I have a pub sheet here? The author, Christine Haynes, is an uh, associate professor of history at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Uh, and the author of Lost Illusions, The Politics of Publishing in 19th Century France, which I think I read. Uh, she was a Fulbright Research Scholar in Alsace uh, and received a grant from the American Philosoph Philosophical Society to work on this book. Uh, and let me, let me just read you about it just on a slight chance that you're interested. Once again, I am not responsible for this cover. I, I know that the picture has a meaning. I know that it does. I know that it, that the picture has a meaning. If you figure out what the meaning is, then you will say, ah, I have since learned after being bored silly by this cover that that is actually from a lithograph from such and such that depicts so and so. That's not the point of a cover. The cover is not supposed to teach you anything <laughs> or reward teaching. The cover is supposed to draw your eye, and this does not. This is an incredibly boring cover. So, I, But I'm not responsible for it. Uh, my services are available for Harvard University Press and any other press free of charge. I could, in about three seconds, design... I would keep the this. This is very nicely done. 
and the title is is good as well. But in about 15 seconds, I could come up with a much better cover, keeping that type font and that that title and all uh, for this book. But I was not consulted. But anyway, the book itself sounds interesting. Uh, the Napoleonic Wars did not end with Waterloo. That famous battle was just the beginning of a long, complex transition to peace. After a massive invasion of France by more than a million soldiers from across Europe, the Allied powers insisted on a long-term occupation of the country to guarantee that the defeated nation rebuilds itself and pays a substantial reparation to its conquerors. Our Friends the Enemies provides the first comprehensive history of the post-Napoleonic occupation of France and its innovative approach to peacemaking. That sounds just fascinating to me. That that is the, the that is the second shoe to fall with with every study of uh, Napoleonic Wars that I've ever done and uh, that I've ever read. I've read a huge number of them. This is this comes out in early November and well, is actually going to show me all sorts of things that I don't know, which is just great. That's why I continue to to love nonfiction. Uh, so uh, that is that is our rather vague, rather wandering uh, Tuesday reads for you. This is our friends, the enemies. Uh, Let's see, we're going to do, oh yes, okay. The Apprentice, uh, Wasteland, the connection between World War I and horror in pop culture. Uh, the Perfect Candidate, a debut YA novel about uh, a young staffer in Washington, D.C. Uh, Impeachment from Modern Library, a volume from Modern Library. Those are always interesting anyway. Uh, this is just, it's, a, it's four long essays about... Uh, <laughs> three presidents, three U.S. presidents who dealt with impeachment, either by being impeached or having impeachment threatened, and one U.S. president who is not going to deal with impeachment. Um, go figure. Then uh, The Big Fella. Oh, my. This is out in bookstores now, I believe. It is a terrific biography. Oh, my God. If you are a sports fan, you absolutely have to read this book. And if you are not, uh, there's a small category of you, but I know there are some that fit this category. If you are not a sports fan and you have a sports fan on your gift-giving list, someone who doesn't go to bookstores is not going to buy this book, but you want to know what to get them for, for the holidays, oh, get this book. <laughs> or even to just feel like giving them a present just in general without waiting for the holidays. As a present for somebody else, it's my favorite thing to do. Uh is to give books to people. I much prefer that to snarfing up books for myself. But uh, so if you know a sports fan who is not a big book shopper, but who would read a book, Jane Levy's book is incredible. Just amazing. Then, uh, Like War, uh, about uh, the frontline soldiers in a new kind of weaponization. And those frontline soldiers are us. They're you, whether you think you are or not. Might as well read the book. <laughs> if it's true for you, if it governs your world, you might as well read the book anyway and find out. Uh, it'll give you a lot to think about. And finally, uh, Grand Improvisation, a big, ambitious history book uh, about uh, America filling the vacuum that was slowly being left in the 20th century by Great Britain and the prickly personalities that were involved all along the spectrum, not just uh, British and American, but also all of the prickly personalities in all of the countries that were affected one way or another that maybe didn't want to be handed off one to another like family heirlooms. <laughs> Just fascinating stuff. Can't wait to reread it. Uh, that is that is my... Uh, I guess we'll call it Tuesday Reads. I don't know. <laughs> or or I could just, we could just lump all of these videos under one category. Steve tortures your TBR. <laughs> We just call it that. <laughs> I thought that would be a hashtag on its own. Steve tortures your TBR. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for now, but we will certainly see each other again. Thank you, BookTube.